We're joined by Walid Faris, foreign policy expert and author of several books, including most recently, Iran, an imperialist republic and US policy. Thank you very much indeed for being with us, uh, Walid. So just this week, the Biden administration said it did not want its allies to normalize ties with Syria. It looks as though Saudi Arabia is doing just that. What do you make of it? Well, Saudi Arabia Laura, has gone in a way different direction. So the mother agreement is Saudi-Iran. And there are reasons for why Saudi and Iran made that decision to stop the enmity of the past for the time being. Saudi is to redeploy itself as a neutral force. They're not joining the Iranians, We're gonna, but they want to stop uh, going under the leadership of the United States in this matter. And then you're going to see the whole chain happening. The UAE already received Bashar al-Assad. Now we're talking about Saudi uh, meeting with, so the leadership meeting with Bashar al-Assad. So it's a regional shift away from uh, the Biden administration, of course. And there is going to be a big debate here in Congress about it, the reasons for why. Okay, well, uh, the, the rapprochement uh, between Tehran and Riyadh, meanwhile, is advancing smoothly. I mean, can we call this anything other than a huge success for Tehran? It's a huge success for two forces at the same time, uh, obviously for Tehran, because Tehran was uh, under the pressure of this uh, revolution inside that its own borders. Uh, Israel was also considering an action against Iran, and the Iranians feared that the Arabs may join. So by getting Saudi and the Arab coalition on a neutral stand, yes, it is a success for Iran, but it's also a success for Saudi Arabia, which has been marginalized in a sense in the UAE as well by the Biden administration. So it's a conversion of interest between Iran and Saudi that is now shaping the Middle East at this point in time. Well, Walid, explain for us, if you would, the, why this geopolitical shift in the Middle East right now is the result of years of US foreign policy in the region and in particular towards Tehran. Well, first of all, obviously, the United States foreign policy made many mistakes. Uh, this is not something that uh, is, it can be doubted. Uh, we had those eight years under the Obama administration where the Iran deal was supposed to reorganize the Middle East in a better fashion. It looks like the Iranians took more from the Iran deal than the United States at the time. Then you have the abrupt four years of the Trump administration. There was a clash with, uh, with Tehran. And now the last two years of the Biden administration were an extension, not a renewal of U.S. foreign policy, but an extension of the uh, Obama policy. So players in the Middle East have seen too many changes by U.S. foreign policy for and against the Iran deal, for and against, uh, of course, the Abraham Accord. And this is why they don't trust that many of the Arab partners that we had or have still do not trust this policy at this point in time. And of course, we know the Obama administration did not support um, a previous uprising in Iran, the Green Movement. Um, there is another protest movement of course, going on now. It does appear to have run out of steam in the last few months. Do you think the dream of, of many Iranians to overthrow the Islamic Republic is over this time? You know, now, if I am the Iranian opposition or the Iranian uh, revolution or resistance, my hopes will be lowered a little bit because they had hoped that on the one hand, the United States, the European Union would start backing that revolution or backing change without really meddling but then if the immediate neighbors such as Saudi, the UAE, the Arab coalition in general are withdrawing themselves from this whole issue and have committed not to interfere in Iranian affairs, of course, the Iranian people will have to put more efforts if they want to affect any change. And that's what the Iranian regime understood. So that that would contain that revolution on the one hand would isolate further Israel in their minds, obviously, and then give them more time, more time to this regime in Iran. And of course, the, the coalition to contain uh, Iran uh, was a was a, a Trump era foreign policy, uh, the Abraham Accords, um, Israel uh, signing normal agreements with the UAE and Bahrain, um, hoping that Saudi Arabia uh, would one day join. Uh, what are your thoughts on the, the current state of those agreements and, and how they may progress? The bigger question is obviously the question of what would Saudi Arabia do next. One thing is to normalize with Iran. Another thing is to refuse to normalize with Israel. It will be debated in the next, uh, I think, months and maybe a year uh, in Congress, in the Knesset, and by Arab uh, partners here. Because the Saudis for them to normalize with Iran, certainly there are conditions in Iran on Saudi Arabia not to partner with Israel in any action against Iran. So that's why you're right. You were right in your previous question. Iran gained a lot.
Well, Israel and Iran, of course, are engaged in a shadow war over Syria. Israel uh, has said it will use military strikes to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, something it says is an existential threat to the country. Does Washington have Israel's back? Washington has Israel's back when Israel is applying Washington's policies. That's not the case. I mean, and your question already, you were very clear. The Israelis have their own vision, as you know, of how to contain, how to deter, how to take action against Iran. But let me be clear. Any Saudi Arab rapprochement or reconciliation with Iran is not going to stop Israel from making any decision or taking any action if it feels that its own national security is uh, threatened. The only difference is that Israel can take action in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, all the way to Iran. But if it wants to take a regional action, the only way to do it would be with the Arabs and the United States. At this point in time, that is shrinking. That hope is shrinking. And, and why is that shrinking? Just briefly. Because because, Laura, the administration, the Biden administration, is still engaged in the Iran deal, despite all these changes, despite the fact that the Saudis and other Arabs are changing direction. And it will not give Israel what it needs if Israel wants to initiate. Now, if Israel is attacked, obviously, the pressure of the public here will, will put all resources uh, you know, behind Israel. But if, if Israel decides, and Israel has done it in the past, to take a unilateral action, a preemptive action, they may not find the, uh, the Biden administration with them. Walid Faris, a great to talk to you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed.